great pleasure to have you here. Brennan Duranzo, here we go. Awesome. Thanks, Mario. Yeah, and we're, we're really excited to be back. Um, this is our second year participating. Unfortunately, we've never been able to be in person, so looking forward to, to that opportunity. But uh, for now, we're, we're here. We, we actually have kind of two back-to-back -back sessions. So um, this one will be kind of a, a little focused on our experience getting here ultimately. And then um, Darwin and, and Carlos on my team as well, they're, they're kind of talking next and go into deeper details on some of the, the tools that we've, we've built around OpenTap and the things that you can, you can really do with it. So you'll get a little bit more of a, a story and background uh, from me and then some deeper, deeper technical stuff from, from Darwin and Carlos. And um, but one of the things that we kind of really wanted to share, because I would say um, within Keysight, we're, we're not a, a traditional open source uh, company. And so it was kind of a, a unique journey, I guess, that we, we went on to, to get to this point. And I kind of wanted to share our, our story a little bit, some of the learnings that we've found and, and things that we, we ran into, even some problems that we had as, as well, kind of, kind of getting here, you know, in the hopes that it can potentially inspire some other people. I know, obviously, everyone here is, is very familiar with, with open source in general, but um, you know, there's oftentimes some challenges, particularly, um, you know, within larger organizations and enterprises where that's, that's not necessarily their key focus. And that's um, kind of what we have really pushed for a lot is to, to get those types of companies to move into the open source space. And the way we ended up doing it was really starting at, um, from the inner source side of things and, and moving out. And so kind of wanted to, to share our journey there and, and some of the learning. So feel free to ask questions. Um, I'll try to monitor the chat as well. But like I said, we have um, Darwin and Carlos on my team are here as well. So we'll, we'll be talking more right after this. So first, just kind of a quick background on, on what OpenTap is. Um, I'm sure many of you have, have not heard of it. Maybe a few of you have, um, but just to give you an idea of of, of what it is and, and kind of what the what it's meant to do. And then we'll kind of go into the, the details of things. So really um, kind of at the core, it's a it's a cross-platform open source test sequencer. Um, we, we really focused around um, a lot of the hardware and, and software test automation. Um, I like it was mentioned, but we are from Keysight Technologies. And so if you're familiar with that company, we're we're really kind of a, a hardware test company in the end. So we work with industries um, kind of all, all across the world in all different areas. And we are able to basically connect and, and work with them and control various different aspects. Um, we are not necessarily traditionally in this space. And so we kind of had to break into the market essentially and, and take somewhat a unique approach compared to competitors that have been in here for, for a long time. And one of the ways that we saw to do that was was kind of coming from a, an open source angle um, and kind of moving away from proprietary code and proprietary tools and really becoming open source. And so the, the focus that we have is basically one around simplicity, making the tool really easy to use, um, making it really easy to adopt and for, for people to, to connect into, um, focusing on scalability. So we don't try to have OpenTab be a tool that can solve every problem for everyone out of the box. Um, it, it's kind of designed to be extended and built around um, people contribute what we call plugins into it. Or that's for controlling devices, handling data, um, um, anything like that. And, and then in the end, we're, we're optimized for, for speed. This is a tool that gets used um, kind of all over the place. So whether you're doing kind of simple automation stuff on your, on your desk all the way out to you know, high volume manufacturing. Um, and we, we've kind of leveraged a couple of existing uh, things in the area. So we're built around .NET and Python. Um, like I said, there's you know, hundreds of different companies and, and users in various different areas kind of all across the, the product lifecycle for it today. And kind of a step into what the architecture actually looks like at the center is, is kind of what we call our sequencing engine. And then we have these various different um, interfaces that, that we um, allow for extending out into. So on the upper left, um, DUTs, so devices under test. So whatever the component is that you actually are testing. And then um, that is actually allowing for you to connect into, you know, whether it's a, 
a cell phone or a base station or a hand, handset, a PC, uh, some other software, anything like that, you can define your interfaces around to control. Um, on the other side is kind of what we call instrument plugins. So these are traditionally things that Keysight makes, you know, power supplies, signal analyzers, signal generators, um, things in that space. The, those are also um, kind of the plugins or drivers you can think of them as to control those. Test steps are kind of the smaller components that um, actually are part of your sequence. And so those are things to do specific measurements, to handle data, do limit checks, um, all of that type of information is, is kind of contained in what we call test step. And then the other kind of components are the front end interfaces. So whether it's you know, simple command line interfaces, what we call the editor, which is actually a, a, a tool from Keysight, um, custom UIs built around it, anything in that space. And then also what we call result listeners, which is more focused around handling of the data. So when you're building out um, your test, the result listeners will then handle storing the data in a CSV or a um, database format, anything that you can customize. And one of the things that we've tried to emphasize with the architecture is that these truly are kind of all individually developed and, and componentized in that way. You know, some anyone in the community can build a device plugin or a test step plugin and that can connect to someone else's result listener um, and data formatting. They don't have to build entire solutions that are all architected together. And that's kind of one of the areas that we've really seen benefits in the end is that um, it, it promotes a lot more of the, the reuse aspects and code sharing and, and all of that are around the, the various tools. So like I said, we'll, we'll take kind of a deeper dive into what all of this means in the next session. Uh, in a much more kind of technical case, but wanted to give you guys a, a quick background of, of what it is that we're talking about in the end. And kind of uh, so just some key highlight and areas around it. Um, you know, traditionally, we were very Windows focused, but because we're built around .NET, we've also extended out into Linux. Um, we, we've extended into kind of the Python space as well, as we see that as a big growing area in our space. We um, kind of traditionally, our customers and, and consumers are much more in the, the window side of things. And so we're moving more into what, what I would say is more kind of the common software path of things with various different tools on the cloud side of things and, and all of that. And so these are kind of key areas where we see different people start their interfacing with us ultimately. And as mentioned, it, it ends up being used in kind of all different markets in all different areas, you know, aerospace and defense, automotive, semiconductor, internet and infrastructure, wireless and general purpose kind of tools. And, and because of all these different things, that's that's why we really wanted to focus on kind of creating this, this open platform because um, you know, there is no kind of one complete solution that address all of these needs, right? And so we wanted to get to the, the point where we can have this really open and extensible platform. Um, but when we started along that journey, uh, we ran into a couple different issues. And like I said, kind of wanted just to share you know, our path of, of getting there ultimately. Um, and, and really at the, the foundation of this, what, what we ultimately want to do is kind of become a de facto standard in the, in the hardware test industry. Um, and I think we, we learned a valuable lesson early on prior to being open source that it's really hard to get there with commercial products. Um, it, it, not that it's impossible, but it, it makes it really difficult. And so kind of to, to reach that goal, we realized we had to take a different approach to things. So kind of we're, we're at that at that place now, all, all the different users and customers and, and tools, but how did we actually get there? So going back to literally the very beginning of this, so, so Keysight Technologies is actually a, a branch off of the original HP, kind of the, the birthplace of, of Silicon Valley, right? So dating all the way back to 1937, um, we evolved, um, kind of partnered with other companies. Uh, eventually we became Agilent Technologies, and then in 2014 became Keysight. So there's a very long history that exists here. And, and then kind of more specific on the OpenTap side of things, this is a tool that was um, created for Keysight usage back in 2011, actually Agilent at the time. 
kind of moving forward into very specific targeted areas um, for silicon vendors, wireless device manufacturing. Um, then we sort of had a collaboration within Keysight because we were seeing all these different tools being used for the same reason. And that, that was a big struggle that we were having was everything was doing, everyone was doing things differently and independently and none, none of the different tools worked together. Everyone was doing their own thing and there was no kind of opportunity to work with anyone else. Nothing could be reused, anything like that. And so we ultimately kind of had a selection of what was just called TAP at the time and moved that into a formally commercial product. And initially working with some of our customers and Nokia was one of kind of the key ones there. They really said, you know, all this is great, but ultimately we need this to be open source for it to be something that we can take forward. And so eventually through working with them and, and through lots of, uh, lots of trial and error, we were able to get there, but it, it took us kind of 82 years from the very beginning of HP to when we were finally able to open source this product. Um, and so we were the, the only, only open source project that has existed in that entire lineage of the company. So it's something that was, you know, not familiar to the company space at all, not something that they were used to um, doing or had any experience around in, in any way. And so we, we kind of took a step back to say, you know, what, what changed and what, what did we really need to do to, to get there? And, and what, what we, what we kind of, what ended up happening ultimately kind of along the way is that we, we actually created an inner source project. And the kind of interesting thing is at the time, we actually didn't even know that it was called inner source. Um, we've since kind of connected through the uh, inner source commons and, and other areas and, and learned that that's what we did. But, but we really kind of took the simple step of just making the code available internally, you know, making all the issues accessible to everyone in the company, um, making all the source code available. That was something that was not kind of traditional and standard. We had this very kind of closed mindset, I guess, even within the company that every team should develop their own things. They didn't want to share stuff with others, even if other tools already existed, they assumed that they weren't good and other, you know, they could develop them better. And so by just taking that simple step of being extremely open in that space and letting everyone see what you were doing, we kind of saw that that created this sort of mindset shift of even, you know, simple, simply people would, you know, come in and submit an issue in at the beginning where there is, um, you know, a problem that they found or even with something as simple as documentation. And it was very easy for them to do. And we sort of over time naturally saw the fact that um, because it was so easy for them to start and communicate with us and and work with us that we we had um, people that just naturally mig um, migrated to that space and in the end we ended up with literally thousands of people within the company working on this um, contributing back to it asking questions building around it um, building different tools and so that that was sort of a the mindset that we wanted to take when when we were moving forward ultimately and so we were kind of thinking you know how do we what do we do to, to do that, to move that forward? Um, and what we, what we kind of ended up with and where we struggled within, within our company for a while was that, um, you know, obviously we're a, we're a public company, we're, we're around, mainly around selling and making money. And so the aspect of saying, let's take something that we're building and make it, make it open source is uh, something that was, you know, we were selling it and we said, we want to give away for free now. And so that, that took some convincing and um, struggles, I guess, to, to, for people to understand that that was the right thing to do. And kind of what we, what we found was, you know, really getting to a business model that we could communicate was, was really the foundation of things. And so, um, and, and we found a, a quote from Martin Mikos and, that was something that we really kind of resonated with, I guess, and his, um, you know, his way of positioning it was that, you know, you have different organizations that at different times essentially interact with you in different ways, right? Some of them have uh, lots of time and are willing to use all of that time to save money. And those are the ones that really kind of end up using a lot of those open source tools at the very beginning of things. But on the other side of it, you have organizations that 
have a bunch of money now and would like to use that money to, to save them time, right? So they are um, kind of people that move between those different areas. And so what we wanted to do was build out a strategy that allowed us to you know, have people start early on in a very easy way, but then allow them to build out into areas where Keysight can ultimately benefit in a, in a financial way as well. And, and really the focus there was kind of helping people move away from a lot of their, their homegrown tools. Um, that's what we saw um, so much of was people that kind of started down the path of, you know, this is an easy problem to solve. We can just do it ourselves and we'll start building it out. But it ended up becoming this kind of unmaintainable project in the end. It's not something that was ever prioritized, something that anyone else in their company really cared about. And so um, I basically positioning it as, you know, this is something that does a lot of the same things. It's free to you. You have all the code available to you. Um, you know, that, that kind of connected with a lot of people where um, they were able to more easily make that transition when they saw that you know, they could contribute back to this project. They can um, view all the source code. There's no, you know, lock into it. There's no risk of, you know, he said as a company deciding not to support this proprietary software anymore because they had access to all of the code. And then our goals kind of from a Keysight perspective were to build tools on top of this that um, actually, that eventually had more and more value, right? And it became easier for us as well because now we're building on the same platform. And that's ultimately the, the connection that we wanted to make, right? Is having kind of this shared platform that, that we're building off of, our, our customers are building off of, even our competitors are building off of, that kind of allows us to move up one level in the, the type of work that we're doing. So rather than focusing on, you know, very low level kind of sequencing and controlling the devices, looking at the actual problem that you're trying to solve, building out test cases, you know, looking for issues within your designs, all of that type of stuff. So um, this is ultimately kind of the model that we, we came up with. Um, Kind of transitioning people along this path and I think this was really the, the foundational aspect to um, us kind of convincing people within our company that, that this was something that made sense was kind of proving that you know giving away stuff um, on the open source side of things doesn't mean that there, there's no kind of revenue path around it and um, that was sort of a a unique kind of realization for a lot of people, I think, within our company that that aren't really from that background. They were from the background of patents and selling everything as proprietary and everything is a competitive advantage and you would never want to, to share any code with people. So um, that was, I guess, really our ultimate, our key learning in the space and, and what's ultimately driven a lot of the success that we've had since then is um, being able to leverage this model where within Keysight, we can build these higher value solutions. And then with our team, we can kind of reach people at these, these lower levels and closer intersect points. And um, so ultimately we, we were able to kind of move in this direction. We actually jointly announced the, uh, the open source version of the project with Nokia. Um, since then, we've had various other kind of partners announce, you know, that them joining, um, you know, publicly. At, at, so it's uh, been kind of cool to see it's not just someone, you know, contributes in the background, but actually, you know, very publicly announces that they've, they've joined um, into the community and have contributed back. And so um, coming from an industry in general in the test and measurement space where none of that was really a, a concept. That's, that's been really cool to see that some of these different companies sort of recognizing that value and being able to, you know, step up and say that they, they see the value of it and, and kind of um, announce these different initiatives with us. And so kind of our, our next steps and, and what we're looking at from here, and, and one of the reasons that, uh, that we're, we're at FOSSASIA and enjoy just participating and communicating with people is that um, you know, we've, we've found just like on the inner source side that the most valuable aspect kind of to move the, the open source piece forward is really not the code and the tools, but it's, it's the, the community in the end, right? And being able to build those interactions with people and 
um, people that find value in, in the project and connecting to them and talking to them and figuring out, you know, where you can have these different intersect points. Ultimately, I think in, you know, the broader kind of open source space, that's one of the unique aspects is people are in general, very willing to share what it is they're doing, where they're trying to go, um, the goals that they have and what, what they're trying to build. And so we've, we've done a lot, I would say on our side to, to help foster this. Um, we have, you know, a forum that we've created where we, are interacting daily with different people. We have a package repository that we host that has all of the different plugins that have been contributed. Um, obviously, we have all of our code available on GitHub and interact with people there. We also have kind of a, a news and, and blog page where we we make announcements and, and reach out to our community. And then we've we've sort of built some internal tools as well with different metrics that we we deem important to kind of um, ensure the health of the community. So looking at you know, usage of the platform, um, interactions on the forum and on our YouTube channel in different areas to kind of give us a good idea of, of how things are growing and building and moving forward. And, and so that's kind of ultimately where we want to connect um, here and what we're, we're kind of, kind of leaving open um, as a, as a kind of communication point is to, to reach out to us if you see um, kind of areas to connect. Um, if there's, you know, tools that you have that you think make sense or, you know, reasons where you think the platform might make sense, we, we want to we wanna build, build out kind of our relationships and, and partnerships in the space. Um, like I said, it's, a, it's kind of a, a new journey for us and, and Kisa in general. Um, but one of the things that we've kind of really enjoyed is being able to connect with all of the people that are so passionate about things and in, in, in the space. So um, if you if it's something that seems like, you know, either you have an existing product or an existing kind of use case that you think fits, um, reach out to me. Um, I'm, I love to, to talk and, and see, um, you know, how we can connect. You can also go directly to our website um, if there, if that's easier for you as well um, and kind of look at um, we have simple things like a contributor license agreement to 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 join. Um, we have different tools and different ways where we can kind of help you as well with putting you know your logo on the website and doing different announcements. Um, and and ultimately, um, like I said, that's that's really what we're looking for. It's um, I think from an open source perspective, it's important that you know, even, you know, the, the open sourcing is one aspect, but getting other people to sort of have that diversity of thought and, and kind of um, different aspects of, of things is, is ultimately what makes, makes, makes this successful. So um, having it a tool that's kind of owned and maintained just by one company and is open source is, is not um, kind of ultimately the end goal. And so if you have different areas that uh, you, you want to connect into, then that's that's um, where we um, really want to reach out and communicate with you. So just kind of a, a few additional resources. If any of this was interesting to you, um, we have our GitLab page, GitHub page, um, like I said, um, where you can uh, connect with us there. We have our newsletter and we have our forum. So um, kind of tools if if um, you want to just stay in touch, you, if anything sounded interesting, just want to track things on, on GitHub just to see where we're going. Um, the, kind of the key different different areas from there. And hopefully that was at least interesting enough to, to get you guys to stick around for the next session where we can go into some deeper technical details on how we, how we do all these different things and build out the plugins and the, the types of things we can do. I think that was more or less all I had from a presentation perspective. So I'll open up for questions from anyone. I said I would monitor the chat, but I didn't do a good job of keeping up.